baseline accompaniment over minor swing. I'm Rob Nolan, and in this series of videos, I'm answering your questions on Gypsy Jazz. And I got a question about baseline accompaniment uh, when you're playing rhythm guitar. And what I'm going to do is show you a baseline accompaniment you can use on minor swing. So basically, instead of playing chords like this. Instead of playing chords like that, it's going to sound like this. something like that. And it's something which sounds really great, especially when you're playing a, in a guitar duo kind of formation or a guitar trio, basically without a bass player. Because usually, obviously, the bass is going to be playing the bass line. And if you start doing that kind of thing with a bass player, then it's, it, it could easily get out of sync and you'd uh, piss the bass player off, which you don't want to do that, right? So um, what you need to do, and the whole, the, the, the really most important thing about getting this technique right is to uh, not worry so much about the, the finer details within these chords and think y what you're doing is y you're kind of painting the, the illusion that the, um, the listener is hearing the bass line and the chords. And it's kind of like uh, you paint that picture and not necessarily that everything's happening, you know, actually on the guitar. So, so the bass line is the most important thing. So um, don't worry about each chord. So even if I went, even without doing any chords, if I want something like. Um, even without any chords or any kind of rhythm, it's still, it's kind of almost possible that, you know, it's a kind of swinging. So the bass line is the most important and you want to get that, you're going to hit the bass line first. So if you're going to practice this phrase. So we go. So A minor six, the same thing up two frets. Then this chord, C, A, E, all three note voicings. This is just a little example. Then you're going to go C sharp dim, it's just bringing those two up, which leads you to D minor. So you can pra practice that first. So you could go something like, and again, you're not going to be going like, you're not really going to be doing that. You're going to go, you're really hearing that bass and the chords is a kind of like an afterthought, kind of like just, just kind of backing the, the bass line up uh, in my, my taste, that's how I like it, not, not so kind of forceful. So, I said that that's the first bit going to sound, so you're really hitting that. So the, the, the backbeat of two and four is quite light in comparison with the, with the bass line. And then I was doing this move. So I got up to D minor, went then hit the bottom E. And while I hit the bottom E, it gives me time to get this hand back down there. There's a D minor voicing there. So F, D, A, D. It's a good voicing anyway. And then I'm going up to the E7. I'm going to use the G sharp in the bass of the E7. That's a major chord. So there's E major. A major third in the bass. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go between that note, that note's going to come in between, and I'm going to kind of ghost a chord underneath that. Then play that chord, and then go back down. So. Right, so, so far minor swing. seven 
Then you've got this really cool phrase. That's uh, preceding the E half diminished there, which is a cool extra chord to add to take you to D minor. So instead of just staying on, on A minor, you're gonna go. That's how it's gonna go, except you're gonna kind of ghost that chord. You're going that's A7. In context. Yeah. Anyway, we'll carry on. Then I'm gonna use this series of two fives here, the, or the autumn leaf changes. I've taught, talked about it before. So D minor seven. Bass line, C major seven, down to the F majors, B half diminished, down to E seven, down to the last bit, A minor, G seven, F seven, E seven. So there's quite a lot of chords there, so don't don't worry about it. You know, if you can pick up the concept in this video, that that's enough. I don't have time to go into real depth with all this, but let me just give it a couple of times around. If you've got the guitar, pick it up. And because uh, it's a pretty cool effect over minor swing. So here we go. Two, a one, two, three, four. kind of thing um, that is the walk-in bass line with minor swing and it sounds really great and you can do it to any standard of course and that's the concept that you're going for concentrating on the bass the chords are just an afterthought backing it up so don't obsess about getting each little movement completely clean the ear is led to hear that bass line the chords are just backing it up so that's how you do it uh, it's gonna sound great by the way so thanks for that question. And uh, if you've got a question you want me to answer, then please send me an email at questions at gypsyjazzsecrets.com. I'll be happy to put you right with a video. And uh, thanks for watching this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give me a like. And I'll be seeing you soon in another video. Hey, it's Robin. Did you like that lesson? If you did, you can do three things right now to continue your journey into Gypsy Jazz. Number one, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. And I hope you do because every week I can send you a new video answering your questions into Gypsy Jazz guitar playing. Number two, you can download your free issue of Gypsy Jazz Guitar Secrets magazine. And you can do that by clicking here or go into gypsyjazzsecrets.com. And number three, you can check out my Gypsy Jazz Transfusion Club. And you can do that by going here, clicking on the button or go to gypsyjazztransfusionclub.com. So if you'd like to do any of that, just click on these buttons and I look forward to seeing you in another video really soon.